How are you, Ian? I'm good, Rich. What's happening? Uh, you tell me. Uh, have our agents talked to each other so we get the same deal next time? <laughs> Ian? Uh, I'll tell you what. That would be great for me. <laughs> Maybe not for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So what do we make of this, that they wind up with the same deal after all the hand-wringing? Ian? Well, agents are actually allowed to sort of conspire, legal tampering, you know, however you would say it. And, you know, they did. I mean, they, the Demarius Thomas people were very aware of where the Des Bryant people were. And, you know, once that Des deal got done, and he was – he was demanding Calvin Johnson money right up until really right up until yesterday morning. Um, and once that deal looked like it was getting done and, you know, around, around 12 o'clock, you started to see a lot more exclamation points and a lot more smiley faced emoticons when you talk to people there. Um, and it looked like it was getting done and, and that's when it seemed, all right, well then, you know, the CAA and Tom Condon, which is about to, joined forces with Todd Francis, Demarius Thomas Age, and they started talking to each other, and that sort of sets the market for people not named Calvin Johnson. And uh, one deal made sense for one guy. It made sense for the other guy, who's a very similar player. And the next thing you know, they got basically the same deal. Five years, $70 million, and then there's just a difference where Des gets a little bit more guaranteed uh, than Demarius. Is that essentially how it goes, Ian? Uh, he gets a little more in total guarantees. In other words, if Dez gets to March without any incident, then he gets $45 million no matter what happens. Uh, if uh, if something, you know, it goes awry, then he gets $32 million. And if that's the case, then Demarius Thomas got a better deal because he gets $35 million fully guaranteed no matter what. And then you take a look at the list of the uh, highest paid receivers. You got Mike Wallace there at number four and Vincent Jackson at five with Calvin uh, in terms of guaranteed dollars, number two. So Dez uh, may not uh, average out as much as Calvin per year, but he gets more guaranteed dollars than, than Calvin Johnson. And, and I guess that was that the, uh, the splitting of the atom that made everybody happy, Ian? Well, I think the, the way that the Calvin Johnson deal was – was taken as far as these, from the team's perspective was that it was an anomaly created only by a very strange salary cap situation and structure. So, and of course the agents wanted it to be seen like that's the contract that you should work off of. But you know, in the end, it was basically like the Calvin Johnson contract was treated like it didn't exist. Um, and so if you treat that as the anomaly, then these two guys are, are the, at the top of the list. And, uh, you know, you mentioned the receivers that are under them. Mike Wallace, Vincent Jackson, very good receivers, but not elite. Not like these guys are. Not like AJ Green is. Not like Julio Jones is. Well, they're next. All Sean Jeffrey. And they're yeah. next. Yeah. And so what you're going to see now is this receiver market, which has been stagnant for like five years, explode. And maybe Julio's the next one to make it happen. Ian Rappaport joining me now uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. What are the ramifications within? the Chiefs' salary cap structure, and then within the league with defenders who have already been paid a lot of money or expecting to be paid a lot of money. What are the ramifications of the Justin Houston signing? Ian? Well, it actually helps them on their cap this year. because yeah, and This is why the franchise tag, I mean, it's the player doesn't like it because it's only a one-year deal. The team doesn't like it because it does crazy things to your salary cap. So it, as much as everyone gripes about how much it sucks, and everybody does, it actually probably helped create a deal like this because it helps the Chiefs' salary cap, which needs some help right away, and it pays Justin Houston probably like he should be paid. I mean, this is this is big-time J.J. Watt money, $32.5 million fully guaranteed no matter what, $52.5 million in guarantees over the course of the, the deal with some injury guarantees there, too. I mean, this is... You know, it's, it's funny, like, he was he was a third-round pick who had some character issues when he came into the league, failed the drug test at the combine, and all he's done has been a model citizen and cashed in earlier than almost anyone else. It's And I'm sure the draft was probably the worst day of his life, but I think yesterday was probably just the opposite. Ian Rappaport joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show because he dropped uh, all the way to third, uh, Justin Houston, due to yeah. popping for pot at the combine, and now... Look at him now. I mean, look at look at what Justin Houston's doing now. It really is remarkable. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs>